वेलकम टू द सेशन थ्री ये पार्टिसिपेंट इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू फोकस ऑन द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ डेटा व्हिच आर कंसीडर्ड टू बी क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ डेटा इन इकोनोमेट्रिक्स आई हैव टाइटल दिस सेशन डेटा टाइप्स इन इकोनोमेट्रिक्स we will start with the first type of data that is cross sectional data this type of data consist of sample taken at a given point of time so suppose today i collect sample of all my family members that what is their income today for example or we can say anything else what is their temperature average temperature today because it is at a point of time and it is a sample of different people it will be considered a cross sectional data another important feature is that random sampling is required for cross sectional data though it may not be it it's not compulsory and necessary that always random sampling will be there we can have some you know uh, problems associated with random sampling it may not be possible sometimes the cost and time does not allow it but generally speaking random sampling generates cross sectional data but it is not restricted to the benefit of cross sectional data is that at a given point of time we know what is the situation ordering of data according to time does not matter in cross sectional data so because it is a point of time at that particular point of time the time lapse within that time frame does not matter for example it the the time period is suppose it can be a day it can be a month it can be year so in 2021 we collected data for several people so now the time variant function will not work which means that it does not matter it is january 2020 or february 2020 housing data in 2021 how many people took the houses we are getting some response from those people in that case again time does not matter in a single day we collected sample of different people now in the single day only we have different time frame morning afternoon evening again it is not having any impact on it let us understand with a particular example how a uh, cross sectional data will look like so it will look like something like this we have observation now observation is maybe equal to respondent so suppose this is person 1 person 2 person 3 person 4 then person 5 and we are taking different uh, characteristic attributes uh, related to those people so the first person his wage is this much 3.1 uh, education 11 educational expenditure in can be it can be expenditure whether male female this will be a nominal data whether married or unmarried but we are not mentioning that at what time it is because all this data of 400 respondent is for a specific time period it may be for a month it may be for a year or it may be on a single day so this is the first type of data that is cross sectional data the second we can take another example also like we have observations now instead of people we can say countries are there so brazil russia india china now each country cannot be repeated so one country at one time so it will be equivalent to one observation and then we have their gdp their uh, governance indicators divided by gdp and we have other variables also and all these will be for again for one point of time it can be a year so in 2010 what is the gdp uh, for brazil what is the gdp for russia what is the gdp for india so this is again example of cross sectional data then the second type of data which is important in econometrics which is a classification in economic this is time series data and this is the most powerful data in the sense because its focus is on time frame here we have the concept of lag and lead lag means that the past influences future and lead means that the future is related to the present so the 2010 gdp value may have an impact 2012 gdp value and the 2015 gdp value which is going to be there will be determined from 2012 gdp so we have historical evidences 
brand analysis and we also have forecasting. It depends on philosophy that past event can influence future events. Major problem in this kind of data is stationarity. We'll be discussing about stationarity, but in simple, it means that the dish, the, 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 the variance, the stability of the data. If a data is considered said to be stationary in econometrics, it means it's stable and it can be used for forecasting, for deriving a function. If it is non-stationary, it is non-reliable in a common in common terms. The example of time series data is we have observation, we have years. Now time frame will be there. Months can be there, days can be there, year will be there. So some kind of chronology and time frame should be there. And then we will have variables and number of variables and their data. So the time frame is very important in this. But time frame cannot be restricted to uh, year or days. It can be anything. Then the third classification is pooled cross-sectional data, which is a combination of cross-sectional data and time series data. This data is powerful because it is having characteristics of both the cross-sectional data and time series data. So if we have a cross-section data and we have time series data, if we try to merge these two data, the outcome will be the pooled cross-sectional data. It has property of both cross-sectional and time series. And similarly, it shares the problems also. If we see an example of this data, then we have observations year, And we have different variables. Now, if we see the years are repeated, 1993, for example, if we have, uh, here you can see, 200 suppose observations are here, 500 observation is there, are there. So 500 observation for 1993, then 500 observation for 1995, then 500 observation for 1996. So we have years, but within years we have the same number of observation. So it is like we are having same number of uh, classifications and uh, same number of respondents in order to understand and conclude about it. Then the fourth classification is panel data. Panel data is which consists of time series of each cross-sectional member in the data type. So it is like having several countries and several years. Okay. It is also known as longitudinal data because it, can, it is considered to be uh, giving much more information about phenomena, about countries, about variables across different sections. If we try to see an example of this, now here we have observations, we have city, we have year. Now the city, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 149, 149, 150, 150, means again for city 1, we will have data from 1986 to 1990. For city 2, we will have data from 1986 to 1990. For city 3, we will have the same thing. So we are having cities and then we are so all these types of data are important to understand and then to conclude. I hope that this third session has been interesting for you in understanding the different types of data. Thank you very much.